chapter 4 we'll discuss about the processor we all know that inside the processor we have data paths so we'll see how data paths are organized how the components are connected how data communication takes place between the uh, between the uh, uh, data path inside the data paths and how control unit plays a vital role in controlling the components inside the data paths and data flow in in this chapter we'll see two types of data paths one is more simpler, simpler version and the other one is more realistic version we'll see the benefits of both the version and we'll see the issues related to both the versions In introduction, uh, as it is said that the C uh, it is mentioned that CPU performance factors. What are the factors that put impacts on CPU performance? The first one is instruction count. As the number of instruction goes, so it it will take more time to execute the entire program. So uh, what determines the instruction count? It, it determines by the uh, instruction set architecture and the compiler, and then CPI and cycle time. This is determined by the CPU hardware. We'll examine two MIPS implementation, which I said in the earlier uh, slide, a more simplified version and more realistic pipeline version. Now, if we look at this point, all the MIPS instructions that are available, we can uh, classify them in this three uh, uh, in these three types. One is memory reference. So we all know that we have uh, only load and store operation and they work on the memory. One performs the read operation in, in the memory and one performs the write operation. And then we have arithmetic logical operation. Uh, that's uh, uh, let's say add, sub, these are arithmetic operation and and or these are all logical operations. Other than that, the next one is control transfer operation where we have a conditional branch and unconditional branch which, is, which we call jump. So, in more general terms, all MIPS instructions can be classified in any one of this, uh, uh, can, can fall in any one of these three uh, types, memory, uh, memory reference, arithmetic logical type or control transfer. Instruction execution. In any instruction execution, PC plays a vital role. Program counter, what it does, program counter uh, generates the instruction address in the instruction memory. And based on that instruction address, the system brings the instruction from the instruction memory. This operation is called fetch operation. Once that fetch operation is performed, then the instruction goes to the decode stage where it is being decoded which means what is that instruction it is being understand in this stage once that instruction is identified then it goes to the execution stage where the instruction gets executed and uh, next the uh, system goes to the fetch stage again and fetch a new instruction from the instruction memory so uh, if you if you see uh, the life cycle uh, of the uh, a program execution, then the pro, uh, program's instruction execution, then you could uh, you could say that it's fetch, then decode, and then execute. So these are the three stage uh, uh, for any instruction. Fetch from fetch it goes to the decode stage. From decode it goes to the execution stage. Once the execution is done, it goes to the fetch stage. Uh, uh, for system goes to the fetch stage for fetching another instruction. So as it says here, the program uh, uh, PC generates the instruction memory and fetch instruction. Now, in the uh, execution stage, uh, ALU is used for most of the uh, uh, for two types of instruction we all know, and that is R type and uh, I type. For these two types, we need a support of the ALU. So uh, we uh, what ALU can do ALU can perform arithmetic operation can uh, uh, can also perform arithmetic operation for generating memory address in case of load and store uh, and this is can be let's say add sub and so on and then branch target address calculation B N E and so on. So access data memory uh, for load. Uh, so and the next step is uh, we for load and store operation we need to access the 
data memory. For sequential execution, if this is our memory uh, me, uh, memory uh, layout, and these are all memory 32-bit memory locations. These are all 32-bit memory location. If this is uh, this is PC, this address is PC. Then then the next address would be PC plus four. So for sequential execution, once the instruction uh, at this address uh, gets executed, the next instruction will be fetched from this address. Then the next one will be fetched from this address, which means the PC is incremented PC plus four each time uh, one instruction gets executed. Obviously, if there is any kind of branching, then this PC plus four is not the next instructions address. To generate the next instruction address, we need to have something like this, PC plus four plus branch offset. Obviously, this branch offset needs to be uh, converted uh, into 32 bit after sign extension. CPU overview. This is this is kind of a Hawkeye version of the CPU overview. We'll see uh, what are the components very briefly that are uh, involved in executing any instruction. We can see the first one is a program counter. We all know the first instruction, uh, uh, first component that we would need for executing any instruction is program counter because program counter generates the memory address for the instruction at that memory address is somewhere inside the instruction memory. So when program counter generates a memory address, it is a memory address inside the instruction memory and the system reads that, that instruction memory to bring the instruction from instruction memory and then uh, feeds it into the uh, decode stage. Now in the decode stage, the instruction gets identified we should remember that when the instruction is inside the instruction memory, this is nothing but a 32-bit combination of binary value. This is true for any instruction, whether it is R, I, or J type. All instructions are a combination of 32-bit binary values. So, inside the instruction memory, the instru uh, instructions are stored uh, uh, 30, uh, as 32-bit binary values. So, when instruction is fetched, uh, it is not uh, identified uh, of any uh, as any particular type of instruction. This is just a binary combination of 32-bit values. In the decode stage, when the instruction comes to the decode stage, it gets identified what type of instruction it is, what particular instruction it is. It, is, uh, it gets identified in the decode stage and what are the registers that are associated with the instruction and, uh, and so on. From there, it goes to the execution stage where uh, ALU is required for R and I type instruction uh, for uh, performing the arithmetic operation. And if it is memory operation, then ALU generates the memory address. And then from data memory, if it is read operation, then uh, if it is load instruction, then load performs a read operation and brings the data out and writes it back to the register file. If it is store operation, only the memory address, uh, when, when uh, uh, ALU generates the memory address, uh, the system performs a write operation inside the data memory. Uh, that is the data stored in any particular register uh, that, that is, uh, that, that is uh, stored in, in, a, in, in, a, in a, the memory location calculated by the ALU. So, for example, if uh, we have uh, add instruction, let's say add instruction 10, 11, 12, if this is the instruction, then uh, ALU generates the final result for uh, that will be stored in register 10. But if it is load instruction or store instruction, let's write it, uh, write the instruction. So this is our load instruction and let's say this is our uh, uh, store instruction. So in case of load instruction, when load instruction is executed, ALU generates the memory address. Let's say this is the memory address. So ALU performs a read operation in this memory address. So ALU performs read, uh, read operation in this memory address and then whatever the data that the uh, that the system reads in this memory address it goes back to it uh, go it it writes back to 
register 10. It writes back to register 10 and follows this link. This is called write back operation. And in case of store operation, in case of store operation, ALU generates a memory address after calculating this part and then uh, this this part generates a memory address let's say this is the memory address so what happens is when uh, when system uh, uh, goes to this address a data uh, uh, that is stored in register 13 is written in this memory location this is called store operation so this is how load store or other operations uh, or other instruction gets executed inside a data path now there are few issues in this data path uh, that we'll see uh, here see here what we have uh, what are these red circles means what these red, uh, red, red circles means now if we uh, see here if we see here now let's have a, an instruction uh, which is this uh, add 10 11 12 and let's have another instruction add i 10 11 and let's say 10. what is the difference between uh, uh, these two instruction one difference is that uh, the first one is R type instruction and the second one is I type instruction. And the other difference is in the first one, we have all the three, uh, I mean the uh, uh, two sources that are coming from register, uh, register or a uh, register file and then the destination is also inside the register file. In the second instruction at I, we have one source coming from the register file and the other one uh, that means 10 is an integer which is 16 bit. So, cons all these two, uh, these two operations will be performed by ALU. Now, see the difference between these two operations. For add ALU, getting two of the source uh, sources uh, or the output from these two sources, 11 and 12, directly from these two links. Directly from these two links. No problem with that. And they are going to be 32-bit value, so ALU can perform the operation uh, uh, easily what about the second one that means add i alu will only get re a, a value from register 1 that is uh, that is uh, uh, from from register 11 only get one value from the register uh, register file that is uh, from register 11 but alu needs uh, needs the value 10 which is uh, which needs to be sign extended and converted to 32 bit somewhere here we need a sign extension hardware which would take 16 bit value and convert it to a 32 bit sign extended value and this value will go to the alu now see this junction see uh, this junction here we have uh, possibilities of having two inputs so what do we need here we need a multiplexer here we need a multiplexer here and multiplexer will, ha will have two inputs and one output will go to the alu so let's say the upper one is active when we are performing add operation and the lower one is uh, is selected when we are performing add i operation that's why it is uh, circled in red because in this junction we have possibilities we have the possibilities of having multiple inputs but we can only select one output similarly in this junction that means uh, here what happens, uh, uh, let's uh, stick to this add instruction. Let's stick to this uh, add, in, uh, add instruction again. So when uh, ALU performs the addition operation, this link will carry the result that will be written back to register 10. Okay. So the, uh, this link will carry a uh, data for register 10. Data for register 10. Now, if I write another instruction, let's say I write this load uh, 11, 40, 13. If I write this, then after ALU works with this one or performs the arithmetic operation on these values, 
ALU would generate the memory address, not the final data, which means this memory address is somewhere inside the data memory. Inside the this uh, uh, this memory address is somewhere inside the data memory. Let's say this uh, this one. So the system would perform a read operation in this data memory and takes the value and writes it back to register 11. So again, this link would carry data uh, for uh, uh, for register 11. Now, if you consider this link, th this this junction, then you would see that we have two possibilities. One, when we are performing arithmetic operation, then we can have a value directly coming from the ALU or when you are performing load operation, then we have a value that is coming from the data memory. So what do we need? We need another multiplexer here. We need another multiplexer here. So multiplexer will have one uh, input coming from the ALU and the other input coming from the data memory. Any one of that can go uh, to the output based on the instruction type. Similarly, similarly in this this uh, circle in this circle uh, we, we can see uh, uh, in this uh, this circle we can see that we have again possibilities of two inputs one when program is executing sequentially so this link will give you pc plus four but when there is a branching uh, required then this link would give you pc plus four plus branch offset so this junction have uh, possibilities have the possibilities of having uh, more than one input so we also need a multiplexer here this would uh, uh, the input one input will be pc plus four and the other input will be pc plus four plus the branch target address and the output will depend on the instruction that is being executed so we, we, in this diagram we see that there are multiple uh, options in this jun in these three junctions and one of the inputs will go to the output now who would do this uh, for uh, the data path the answer is control unit control unit will see the instruction and its type and the operation and based on that control unit unit could send appropriate control signal to the junction that means to the multiplexers and based on the control signals the multiplexer will will output one of its uh, available inputs 